This is the Horse Radio Network. Greetings, everyone. Coach Jen here, and thanks for tuning in to Horse Tip Daily, episode 1321, where monthly Hit'em Endurance host Karen Chatton offers up some tips on using a GPS as a training tool. This episode is brought to you by Purina Mills. If you're listening to this program, it's obvious that you love horses. And let's be honest, our older horses hold a really special place in our hearts. That's why we want to do everything we can to keep our old companions around as long as possible and living their best lives. Well, our friends at Purina get this. That's why they've developed Purina Equine Senior Horse Feed with Active Age, a proprietary prebiotic proven through years of research for a senior horse's aging immune system. Because when it comes to our horses, greatness never ages. To learn more, visit PurinaMills.com backslash Active Age. Well, let's talk your endurance tip of the month. Uh, and it is about something that if you're an endurance rider, you really need to figure out. But a lot of trail riders are using them now, too. Right. Uh, GPS, which is a great tool for us to use. It can really help teach us how to ride a little more strategically and effectively with our horses. You know, heart rate monitors are also an awesome tool and they have several models now that combine the two together. I have found, you know, personally that the GPS has been far more helpful for me because it's enabled me to learn how to rate my horses better. You know, I learn how to gauge, you know, my rate of speed, my average moving speed. You know, if you pay attention to it, you can learn, you know, gosh, you know, I, I might be moving at six or seven or eight miles an hour, but then that 10 or 15 minutes, I just fiddled around or I'm late getting out of my vet check hold, kind of blows my time out the window. So, you know, if you're planning on doing a hundred or a ride like Tevis, you need to really be paying attention to your overall moving speed. And so a GPS can be really beneficial in that regard. Um, on the last ride that I just did, I had my Indomondo app turned on. And normally I turn off the sound on it because it irritates me, you know, like on a training ride, because every mile it tells you that you've gone another mile. So when you're, you know, riding a 50, that after can be the, depressing. <laughs> it gets, well, it can be depressing, but it gets annoying after, you know, 40, 40 by 50. Jeez, I've only been 10 miles. I'm tired already. <laughs> <laughs> I know. But one of the, the things that I thought was really cool, and this would be really helpful for a new rider, is it was telling me how many minutes it took me to do that mile. And so it helped me kind of gauge, okay, in this kind of footing or this kind of terrain, it's taking me six or eight or you know, so many minutes to do a mile. And then that way I was able to calculate, you know, an, an idea of, well, when I should be getting back to camp for lunch or, or when I think I'm going to be finished, which is helpful if there's somebody there, you know, like I had my junior and her dad was there and he just kind of wanted an idea of, you know, when we might be coming back in for the checks and to finish. So he would make sure he was there. And, and so you know, it was really kind of helpful and it, it helps you learn to just be a little bit more efficient on how you're moving and more aware of when you're possibly wasting time and when you can or can't make time because you learn on the different kinds of footing and the, the steepness of the terrain, you know, how fast you, you can anticipate that you're going to be able to go. And once you, you know, watch, you know, your GPS or your app or, or whatever you're using often enough, you can, it really helps you learn to just be a better rider and, and become better at managing your horse and, and how you're moving out down the trail. Now, when you go to these rides, you've done them so many times. There's lots of rides you've done tons of times. Mm -hmm. So when you go in, you know, you know, with the mm -hmm. terrain, you know, what's going on. Do you go in with a goal that I want to average six miles an hour on this one? I want to average eight miles an hour on this one. Do you go in with that kind of plan or is it more loosey goosey than that? Sometimes you can, you know, that's kind of a more important thing, like when you're starting a new horse or 
you know, or maybe you're bringing one back or yourself back after an injury, perhaps, and you know what you need to average just to make it through in time. And then it's also helpful when you want to step up your game and and get through the rides a little bit faster, maybe place a little bit better. I have found it's really important when I'm doing a ride like Tevis that I go out, you know, in the year or the months leading up to it and I compete at other rides that might be similar terrain that I can keep up the moving average that I know I'm going to need to keep to get through yeah, Tevis. you don't come to Florida to time. practice for Tevis. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. Yeah. So, so, yeah, it can be a really helpful thing. And, you know, they've gotten more and more affordable. How uh, long and, do the batteries last in the GPSs? Um, you know, it depends. There's different models that can be that have rechargeable batteries. And then I like the handheld version I've got that just takes two double A's. And they will typically get me through a 50. If I'm doing 100, then I plan on having extra batteries at like the midway point and change them out. Yeah, that's a nice thing because with the other GPSs with the rechargeable, you can't change the batteries. So... Right, you got to remember. I guess you know, if you had a phone, remember to plug I mean, it in. If you had a phone, you could you could bring extra batteries. If you have a phone where you can change batteries, like mine, but right or a way to and but they a eat batteries external. faster than your GPS is going to. I mean, when you use a GPS on a phone, you're you're in an hour, your phone's dead. Well, it can't. Yeah, exactly. They're getting better and better all the time. You know, like my phone, um, it's the new active model, and it's got a much larger battery than my previous phones had and it has no problem doing uh, you know it uh, being on all day for 10 hours and recording everything and running that app with the location um turned on but you know for some people their phones will run down and die if they're if they've got to turn everything else off then you close all the other apps make sure it's all shut down yes i yes i usually try to and uh you know, the the thing I learned, as we, you probably remember when I lost my phone on a ride last year yes. um, and then went back two weeks later and found, found it. it. Well, I had put it in airplane mode so that it wouldn't drain the battery. Well, you can't locate it then because it's, right. Right. There's it's no, airplane everything's mode. turned off. It's in airplane <laughs> mode. It's not sending out or receiving a signal. So, uh, you, you know, that's the catch 22 w- with that is, um, you know, if you set it so that it it's not draining the battery, then it's also not able to be located if you do happen to lose it. <laughs> and it, what brand do you use of GPS? A Garmin. You use a Garmin. Okay. Mm-hmm. And that's your handheld one. Yes. Okay. yes. And right. I have it on a neck strap and I normally ride with sun shirts that have pockets so that I just keep it in my shirt pocket. So it's easy to just pull in and out, you know, to look at and to to get to easily. You know, some of them, if you stick them down in your saddle pack, they're not, you know, going to receive as good of a signal some of the time. Does that one allow you to set the course ahead of time and do waypoints and stuff? Yes, you can yeah. do all of that with it. Mm-hmm. Cool. And do you use that feature? Sometimes, you know, when we did the cross-country rides on the Pony Express Trail, that's how we followed the trail was by downloading the tracks or waypoints onto the GPS. And then we needed to look at it often enough to make sure we were still on the course. You can find links to today's guests as well as lots more tips at horsetipdaily.com. Look for episode 1321. Thanks again to our sponsor today, Purina Mills. You can find out more about equine senior horse feeds by Purina by going to purinamills.com backslash active age. All of Horse Radio Network shows are available on our free net app. Go to your app store on your iPhone or your Android. Search Horse Radio Network and download it today. It's free and easy to use. You can also listen on the website, horses in, horseradionetwork.com, on your computer, on your phone. You can use your browser. You can also use your favorite pad, podcatcher or iTunes. This is Coach Jen, and I will be back again soon with another tip. So until then, go ride your horse. The Horse Radio Network and the Horse Radio Network hosts are not responsible for statements made by guests on the Horse Tip Daily. Please use your own judgment when listening to the tips on this show.